Recently, I had a couple of real-time interactions with uh, believers, both of them novices, uh, folks who just waltzed into their faith versus reason debate with no appreciable background. And while they started out cordial enough, they seem to have soured after. And I think that's because both of them came from an echo chamber of religious indoctrination with absolutely no comprehension of secular ethics or evolution, science in general, things I've understood since I was a little boy, they were apparently shielded from and never even thought about. That's the impression I get. I'm not going to identify either of these people because I think they're, they're both beginning a long and painful path of personal discovery, or at least I hope they are. It would certainly be better than where they're at now. Imagine living your whole life being fed the same lie by everyone you know, including lies about anyone you might meet in the future, if they say that they don't believe as you do. The microculture that raised you also poisoned the well against considering any other perspectives. Imagine that nothing you were ever taught to believe was ever actually factually true, so that other people, including your interlocutors, could not objectively show that it's true. It's just, you just got to take it on faith. I just got to believe what you say simply because you say so, trusting in some so-called authority. You're told that uh, you just have to believe whatever you were told to believe simply because you were told to believe it, not because of reasons, both that indicate why you believe what you do, but also because reasons might be discovered later on that will force you to change your mind. If truth matters to you more than whatever you'd rather believe, then you would change your mind. But if your belief matters more than the truth, then you will remain firm in your convictions. There's something wrong with that. What if it doesn't turn out to be true? You have to be open to correction. I am. I've been corrected a few times, and not always politely. But it's always by someone that knows what they're talking about, not some newbie know-nothing from out of nowhere. Reasons don't matter in religion. Faith means that facts and evidence don't mean anything. You believe what you were always told to believe because you were told that you'd better believe that or else. And you don't have a choice if you're raised like that because you, you weren't taught how to think, not critically, not analytically. And such people are conditioned so that they cannot question the unquestionable authority. So they become obedient minions of the clergy, which is what religion is traditionally all about. If you come from a background like that, then you won't even know what reason is, much less how to use it. And that's where I think uh, uh, both of these people were coming from. You know, one of them based his position on a video of erroneous arguments from his favorite street preacher. And I told him I'd be happy to make a video rebutting all of those arguments, which I did. And then I sent him a link and asked for his feedback. But I got no response. So a week later, I sent another one. Again, no reply where they were quite talkative in email before. Imagine being unable to evaluate an unsupported position, nor to be able to admit any failure therein, even after you realize that it is indefensible, that it is not evidently true, nor even possible, but you have to believe it anyway? What would that do to your mind? I've heard, or rather read, rumors that the first guy made a video about me where he calls me a liar rather than admit that his favorite preacher lied. Even when other Christian ministers agree that, yeah, that preacher is a liar, that this thing he said, that's not true, and he knows it's not. The other guy I was talking with did the same thing, only he didn't just call me dishonest, claiming that I lied. He also said that I was ignorant. He admitted to debating a number of experts in multiple topics that he knows next to nothing about himself. So why is he debating people he should be learning from? He, he, he's taken a position on something he knows nothing about, but he's, he's going to debate the experts on it. Isn't that typical? He knows that I know each of these topics better than he does because he's never studied it, because he doesn't want to know. By definition, then, that makes him the ignorant one. Ignorance means to ignore certain realities that you don't like, like that uh, you can neither accept nor argue against. Just ignore them and pretend that they're just lies. Thus, he violated his own ninth commandment by bearing false witness against me and everyone else who disagrees with him. He said that he could not reason with me because I don't believe in God. So if I don't already presuppose his deity, then how could he convince me that it exists? I would have to believe in it already, and I don't. 
So what can he do when he doesn't have reason? He sounds like one of those people that thinks that everybody believes as they do, but that we all just lie about it and pretend as if we don't, uh, as if that makes sense, as if we all want to pretend that there's no God so that we can sin, which is not only stupid and illogical, we know that, but it's also not true of anyone ever. But he calls me unreasonable because I need reasons in order to accept something as true. While he maintains his belief without reason and against all reason, refusing to be reasoned with, he will not consider anything, no logic, no data, no facts and evidence, nothing that would challenge the only perspective he knows anything about, what he was always told to blindly believe ever since he was a child. I tried to ask him a handful of questions designed to get him to reevaluate his position, but he refused to even acknowledge those questions. Instead, he just blocked me. Not only that, but he called me a liar, which that irritates me because the only advantage I have over believers is that I have the truth on my side. Not just a matter of faith or belief, but what I can objectively prove where it is impossible to defend creationism, honestly. So apologists have to lie in defense of the faith. If I ever lied like creationists commonly do, my own side of this debate would come down on me like a ton of bricks. If I said something wrong, even if I thought it was true, my own allies would correct me immediately, and maybe even quite rudely, because in science and history and so on, accuracy and accountability are paramount, where none of that matters at all in religion. So if you're a believer, you can say whatever you want to, and you won't get the pushback that I would. But if I ever lied like they always do, that'd be the end of my career. That'd be the end of any value to my position on top of that. If it isn't true, then why believe it? I was asked people during debates, what is the value in believing what is not evidently true? And what is the value in believing it completely and refusing to admit when you're always wrong? So how do you know whether someone has lied? First, you have to be able to show that, that whatever they said is wrong. And that means it has to be objectively wrong, factually false. Now, if you sincerely believe that whatever you said was true, that it's still an error, it's still bad, it's still your fault but it's forgivable. It's just a mistake that you better learn from. It's not as bad as a lie, and it's not a lie unless you knew it was wrong when you said it anyway. Or if you claim something to be a fact when there's no way you could know whether it is a fact or not, that's a lie too. Not in religion, of course. In religion, they call that revealed truth. But in science and in every other application, that's called a lie. It's one thing to say that you believe something, but quite another to present baseless speculation as if it's a matter of fact. Claiming facts that aren't facts and pretending to know things you don't know, those are both lies, yet that's what every religious faith does. Those two lies are what religious faith is based on. Believers can't pretend to know what they don't if scientists know better. So a common tactic that creationists will use is to pretend as if the experts don't really know what they do. Then the believer can say that they know what they don't. They don't have any evidence to back their assertion whatsoever, but we have to have absolute proof to the contrary. And even if we do, they'll reject that too. That, that's just their double standard. There are few things that, can be, that we can be absolutely certain of. And most of our knowledge is according to degrees of certainty. For example, I know there is no God. I know that to the same degree and for the same reasons that I know there are no leprechauns. And some believers try to pretend that they know that there is a God but they don't because I know better. We don't have souls. Not only is there no evidence for them, neither in neuroscience nor even in philosophy, but there is actually substantial evidence against them. And without souls, there cannot be an afterlife and thus most religions are rendered moot. And while there are many different religions, some with their own unique sets of scriptures, all claiming to be the absolute truth and the revealed word of the one true God, and even if they can't agree on which God that is, there's no significant truth in any of them. Not one thing that one religion believes that they can show to be more accurate than every other faith that believes something different. And that point goes on my list of facts and evidence against God. And this guy said that I could not produce any evidence against God. And of course, I already had a video with a long list of that evidence. But he simply dismissed all of it as if facts are not objectively verifiable data. They're just claims, just assertions equated to evidence. Because remember, believers think that their opinions are fact, but that a scientist's facts are just mere opinions. Another double standard. But to be clear, 
Evidence is a body of objectively verifiable facts that are positively indicative of and or exclusively concordant with one available position or hypothesis over any other. That's what I listed, what he doesn't have or understand. He said it was impossible to read the Bible and come away from that with the impression that God does not exist or that the Bible depicts that character as villainous or ridiculous, uh, as if it's a magic invisible man. It doesn't matter to him how many former ministers and missionaries and seminary students have studied the Bible and come away with the same opinion of it that I have. But it proves that I didn't lie about that. He did. He accused me of lying all the time, saying that I lie for a living. So I pressed him to show one lie I ever told at any point in my career and to show one thing he believes that, uh, that, that he can show to be actually true, the way I can show that my position is true. Of course, he couldn't show any truth to his own position because there isn't any. But eventually, he said that I lied when I said there is no God. So if I express an informed opinion based on substantial logical and physical evidence, he calls that a lie. But if he makes the reverse, if he asserts impossible absurdity supported by nothing and contradicted by everything, then that's being truthful? Now, I've, I've said before that it seems to me that believers define truth as whatever lies they want to believe, and they define lies as whatever truths they want to reject. I saw that demonstrated again with this guy who accused me over and over again of lying, while he and his friends called me a dishonest, ignorant swine and criticized my faith in the religion of atheism and the fairy tale of evolution. And that's not lying? Saying that the lack of faith is a faith and the rejection of religion is a religion? And how can he complain about believing in fairy tales when he believes in the Garden of Eden? And we can effectively prove evolution by an overwhelming preponderance of evidence beyond reasonable doubt. That ain't no fairy tale like what he believes in. I shared with him my video on the evolution of whales because it's written to be a basic primer for beginners. His reaction to that was to say that my video didn't prove one thing. Well... What it proved was that we have substantial evidence for evolution, including a complete sequence of transitional fossils, as well as atavisms, vestigial features, embryological recapitulation, phylogenetic orthologs, everything necessary to show how whales definitely did, in fact, evolve. We know they did. That's not just a belief. We don't need faith. We got more than enough evidence to demonstrate that. And we could say the same about the evolution of birds from dinosaurs. I made a video about that, too, again, showing a complete sequence of transitional fossils, along with genetically regenerated atavisms, vestigial features, embryological recapitulation, phylogenetic orthologs, all of it, enough to prove that birds actually are dinosaurs. And we can say much the same thing about several other lineages, too, including humans. Now, some of these lines of evidence would already be enough to make a case all on their own, even if we only had half of what we do. But all of these lines of evidence together, and as complete as they are, in all these different lineages, that's way more than enough to know that this is what happened. This is a matter of fact. A believers can't honestly say that you don't know these evolved. Yeah, we definitely do, without a doubt, because we can prove it. There is no question about that. You know what else? We also know that the Tower of Babel and the Exodus are just fanciful folklore. They never happened. We also know that the global flood of Noah's Ark never happened either. That's one of those rare things that we actually know for certain. Because the only way to deny all the evidence disproving the global flood of Noah's Ark is to deny reality itself by pretending that nothing is real, as if we live in the Matrix, and that we have a, a, fake, a fake past. In which case, since our history is false too, that means that Noah's Ark didn't happen in the alternative reality either. Either way... Noah's Ark still didn't happen. And we know for sure that the Garden of Eden was just a metaphorical fable with not even a kernel of truth to that tale. Adam and Eve never existed. Even Christian biologists admit that Adam and Eve are genetically impossible. And these scientists provide another wealth of evidence to show that we definitely evolved from within the family of apes. So, religious apologists are liars who accuse honest people of lying. And to prove that, I offered one more challenge to both of these people, and of course that challenge was ignored as it always is. Step one, name any 
evolutionary scientist, paleontologist, geologist, zoologist, geneticist, whatever, who lied while promoting evolution over creationism. Quote them verbatim and show how we know that what they said was wrong and that they knew it was wrong so that it qualifies as a lie. Step two, name any professional creationist who did not lie while promoting creationism over science. I've been at this a long time. There are no exceptions. So just name the person. I'll quote them and show how we know that what they said was wrong and how we have good reason to know that they knew it was wrong when they said it anyway. And finally, have wisdom enough not to accuse someone of lying unless you can immediately show all of that. Because if you accuse someone of lying and then you can't show that what they said was even wrong, then it'll backfire and you're the liar.